So I've got a, uh, um, a system in my environment that I've called the Thor server. And I have identified this server as being a critical device inside of my organization. I'm gonna show you that here in the demo. And what I've done is I've gone ahead and I've loaded this up with a ton of uh, malware and viruses. And I've got some uh, antivirus on there that's talking to uh, an advanced threat protection type tool. And, and ultimately what's happening is those events are being sent to my Splunk instance here or, or my SIM. And I'm gonna go, to, go ahead and show you how those incidents that can happen um, can then go ahead and flow up into side of service now. Um, and then we can, as Matt was saying earlier, that standardized process. This is something that happened. What do we need to do in a, in a, in, in, you know, from start to finish to deal with this particular threat that, that I hit? Um, so let's go ahead and uh, I'll, I'll start going in and, and showing you how this would work. Okay, so, so first off here, here's, here's my Splunk instance that I have. And I've got one particular um, threat that I like to look for here. And I'm going to go ahead and expand my search here for the last 24 hours here. So let me go ahead and I'm going to go ahead and give this a search. And once it finishes here, you're going to see inside of my Splunk instance here, I can expand this list. And I've just got now a wealth of information that my antivirus tool has already gathered about this particular threat. And I see that, you know, the name of my device that had the, fat, um, the threat, I see the path that the threat was in. I see the malware um, hash of, of the threat as well. Now, in, in my demo, what I'm gonna do here is I'm gonna go ahead and hit this option. This is an integration that Matt was kind of showing that that ServiceNow has as part of the solution. So here you're gonna see an option here, create a ServiceNow security incident. So, so it's gonna take the data that I specify and let's start the ball rolling. This machine, it's infected. The threat was left alone. Let's start our standardized process to contain this threat. So let me do so. And guys, and while, while this finishes processing, um, all the data that you see here can be pushed inside of ServiceNow so that it's there for your technicians to use and, and, and analyze. Um, so, so it's gone ahead here and it's, it's sent that information up to my ServiceNow instance. So now I'm gonna go ahead and start working this particular incident, in, incident inside of ServiceNow. Okay, so here is my latest security incident that would have been created. So when I drill in here, I can now start seeing some information, you know, from that came from my SIM. So here's that Thor server that you saw that was in, infected. And then over here, you see that I've got a business impact here set of critical. The reason that this is now top of my list is because I've specified. I have leveraged um, ServiceNow's CMDB. So, so what I did there is I clicked this little, you know, show me the dependencies. Where does this Thor server live in the grand scheme of things? And when I look at this, I see that it's actually part of, you know, a business service. So I can look a little bit higher in, in the scheme of things. And, and here's that Thor server that is actually supporting um, a critical part of my business, uh, that my retail point of sale, you know, service. Now, I, I just think it's, it's cool. Um, you can go on to any of these different in, um, resources here, and then you can actually see, you know, all the different related tasks, right? So I can see all the different tasks that are currently in my queue that have to do with that particular resource. And here you'll see, yeah, Thor server, that's my demo box. So you see here, I've got a ton of incidents that are queued up where I got to work here on this particular device. So we leverage the CMDB, and then you can have an idea, does this need to be top of my pile or a medium or, or where does it need to be? Now, earlier, I was showing you on that Splunk instance, um, how we, you know, yeah, your antivirus tool, whatever you guys use, contains a lot of information. And I've pumped that information right inside of my short description. Now, what I think is kind of neat about this here, and this one particular threat, um, it's, it's called anware.banzai. And it's a, it's a flashback to the past virus. Uh, those um, maybe would remember it. It was like a purple gorilla monkey, and it would kind of make a bunch of pop-ups happen. It's kind of funny. But anyways, under the short description here, ServiceNow parsed it. So when I go to actually look at my knowledge base article here, I can actually see, 
oh, okay, here here is a KB article that we we had. You know, we we've seen this. You ever get a flare up of an old virus in your environment? Yeah, they they happen once upon a time. I forget how we fixed it, right? Document it, um, and then that's available right right from ServiceNow um, if you leverage like the knowledge base. So here for the description of this threat, hey, the Thor server has been infected. Here's my install path um, per, for that particular threat, um, and, and it was currently allowed, right? So there's all this information that's available um, that we can pipe inside. Now I'm gonna scroll a little bit down to the bottom here, and, and I wanna walk you through this here. So for this particular threat, I've got a critical server I know, and it's it's been infected by malware. I'm gonna click on um, here, I clicked it fast, the response workflow. And, and um, ServiceNow has a number of default out-of-the-box workflows that are available. And, and a lot of times we work off of these and then tailor them um, to be more specific in your environment. But play with me here. So, so here as an example, the first task I'm going to do here. Okay, you've got a machine, it's infected. Well, you know, can you go ahead and just rescan the particular machine? Is it still infected? Okay, so, so what I'm going to do is as a technician, you'll see here where it says related tasks. I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to specify the outcome is yes, I rescanned the, um, uh, the, the, the machine and it was still infected. Now, what will happen here is my response workflow is going to go ahead and move to the next you know, step in the process. Was the removal of the malware um, successful? And, and here I'm just going to say, just play with me here as an example. Um, I'm, I'm going to say, you know what? No. No, this actually was not successful. So I'll hit no, save my task, and you'll see my workflow move. The point that I wanna make here, and, and, and now here's a task, right? I now have a task saying, okay, well the next step in the process, I, I just wanna wipe this particular device. So think about your standardized process of, of handling a security related event. At this point, you know, this is another member of my team that's maybe not inside of security. Maybe this is my systems management team. So I can have tasks that'll go ahead and be sent to um, different devices, okay, or, or different personnel, I should say. All right, so for here, I'm gonna say, yes, I, uh, I, I remediated this. And real quick here, yeah, and this this is this comes up so much, you know. Sometimes we forget, like, hey, I've got this this device. It got super infected. I know who the primary user that uses this device is. I think it's a good idea to maybe reset that user's password, right? What is your standardized approach, right? And and again, this is kind of one that's available out of the box here that can be expanded upon a little bit. Now, here on this particular task, resetting of a user password. You might be thinking, well, geez, Pat, is there maybe a way I could, you know, maybe automate some of this stuff? And the answer is yeah. You know, ServiceNow allows you to hook into, um, we can hook into um, Active Directory and, and there's modules there that you could just automatically, you know, reset a user's password, right? If, if you wanted to get to those levels of automation, those are capable within, within the tool set. Um, so here, reset the user's password. Just play with me. I'm going to go ahead and I'm just going to specify real quick. Um, yep, work notes. Yes, I reset the password for Matt. And I'll post that. And then I'm going to go ahead and just fill up, finish out the, the rest of this workflow. <laughs> yeah, man, you gotta reset your password now. Was this part of a larger breach, right? <laughs> so, so here, maybe, right? Think about the different scenarios that you may need to have a standardized process for. Um, so, so we could have it. So, hey, do I need to get HR involved? You know, legal involved? Whatever that need that path that needs to be snaked out as a path. Um, but for here, for just the sake of the demo, I'm going to go ahead and I'm just going to say no and save it. Now, 
one of the things here that 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 really has benefited a number of places that we've we've put this in is really around documentation. Okay. So so a lot of times what will happen is people will say, Pat, you know, at the end of the week, I have to go through and document all the different incidents that I've been kind of working on throughout this. Um, so the last thing I'm going to do here is I'm going to go ahead and, and, and close this particular incident. And, and then what I do that, what will happen is I'm going to have a post-incident um, review. So in that example, you know, when I had this workflow, there could have been other individuals that were brought in, people from my systems management team, people from my active directory team that got tasks that handle this particular security incident. And based on you know, the notes that they put in here, you're, you're gonna see all the different steps here that, that I took. You know, and earlier when you saw like, hey, um, yes, I reset the work, uh, the password for Matt, it's gonna tell you the technician that was involved that did that particular change order or, or, or uh, um, work note for that particular task. So this simplifies a lot of the paperwork um, especially when you have multiple teams involved and and, and multiple personnel. Um, so next, what I was going to show you, and actually got to be conscious here to make sure there's any questions. Um, nope. Okay. The last things here I wanted to show in regards to security incident response was going to be some of the dashboards that we have here. So under my dashboards, I, I really like, I'm going to start here with the security side. We've got a CISO dashboard that's pretty good here. <clears throat> so now I can have a better idea as far as the amount of incidents that are coming into my environment. How long does it take me to you know, respond to a threat, to contain a threat? Um, how many are high critical, low priority to the business? Um, there, there are many different metrics that we can now look at to see this. Now, Next, what I wanted to do here is I wanted to go and start showing vulnerability. So security incident response, right? Threats come into the environment, whether that's a malware, maybe it's a phishing um, type email, and there needs to be a standardized process that we respond to that. 